Good morning. So today's video is an angry video because it's about load shedding. What load shedding is and why load shedding is a thing in South Africa. This behind me is our UPS busy powering just the internet for the house. Uh, lucky enough to have one of these, but yeah, we're having load shedding right now because the country is on stage two load shedding. And so this is an explanation of load shedding and why South Africa has it. Let's go. So what is load shedding? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's the shedding of the electrical load on the South African electricity grid. Basically, we do not have enough supply for all of the electrical demand currently on the system. Why is this? Well, you can go down a deep, dark rabbit hole of why the South African government hasn't produced enough electricity infrastructure over the past couple of years. But basically, it's because as the years have gone on, the South African population and thus the South African demand for energy has grown and grown and grown. And we haven't kept up with uh, building new infrastructure, building new power stations, building new renewable energy sources and that to supply all of those people, businesses and uh, industry with enough electricity. And so we have this thing called load shedding, where at certain times of the day when the electrical demand is the highest, the government or whoever is on the board of the ESCOM, whatever utility manages the electricity in South Africa, they decide to switch off large areas of the country and so that those uh, places don't have access to electricity in order to reduce the total load on the electricity grid. Because electricity is not something where if there's just too much demand, uh, those people don't just get electricity. If there's too much demand on an electrical system, it can create a short or like a, an explosion of sorts, basically, in electrical power stations because the electrical grid is all interconnected and if there's too much demand on an electrical grid, it can cause those uh, electrical power stations that, that are connected to the grid to fail and to shut down. And then there's a real problem. So say ESCOM doesn't do load shedding. Come 5 o'clock in the evening, everyone goes home, the electricity uh, demand in the country spikes, and the electrical uh, power stations and that, that supply South Africa with electricity can't keep up, they shut down. It's not just like turning a little switch on and off back at the power station, because those electrical power stations take uh, many days to start up, and have to be slowly synchronized to the electrical grid. It's to do with the frequency of electricity production. Um, it's a complicated process, and it can take many, many weeks to start up large amounts of power stations uh, because you have to use a small generator to start up a bigger generator to start up a bigger generator to start up a bigger generator to start up a power station, which can then be used to start up even other larger power stations. And so South Africa doesn't have that luxury. If we have a national uh, blackout, which is quite likely if we don't have load shedding, um, there's no one else nearby to send us electricity to start up our electrical power station and to start up our electric electrical grid. We will be without power for many, many weeks, and who knows what kind of criminal activities or what kind of problems can occur during weeks without electricity. Because most people think, oh, electricity, you can't turn the lights on, you can't cook, you can't heat your house, whatever. That's not the important part. The important part of electricity in a country is sanitation. All of our water storage and our water lines, our, our water supply basically to your house, to your factory, to your business, whatever, is run on electricity. The pumps, the pressure of the, electric, uh, of the water system is obviously pumped up to you f with using electricity. Those, uh, the water that comes out of your tap is pressurized because it's pumped from a water station somewhere, uh, from a water reservoir somewhere, through the water pipes all the way to your house. That's why when there's a burst pipe down the road, you lose water at your house, because all of the pressure that was in your line is now coming out of the, the burst pipe. And so, without electricity, you can't pump water to people. People can't drink, people can't cook. Uh, that's, you see, the rather big problem. And so that's why, sorry, to get back to my original point, we have load shedding, is because to avoid a national grid blackout is the number one priority of ESCOM and any sane entity controlling electricity. So we have load shedding in targeted areas at certain times when demand is the highest in order to bring down the total demand, in, in order to make sure that our power stations uh, don't get overwhelmed and overloaded and don't break down. So, officially, South Africa has 58,095 megawatts of electricity generation capacity. That's how much electricity we can produce. 58,095 megawatts at any time can be produced by all of our power stations. But that's the official statistic. And the reason we have load shedding is because the actual amount of electricity we have available at any given time is way lower. Uh, I was just reading an article earlier about today. At the moment, we've got load shedding because... Pff, why is it? Creel, Madupi, and Kendall power stations all have breakdowns uh, and have generation capacity constraint issues. Yada, yada, yada. Those... Uh, electrical uh, power stations aren't supplying enough electricity as they should be. And so that 
58,000 megawatts is often way, way, way lower. I was looking at this terrible chart earlier today that was terrifying me, which is the percentage electricity availability factor. So how much of that 58,000 megawatts is available at any given time in South Africa? And if you look closely at this chart, this is why we have load shedding. Because in 2016, of that 58,000 megawatts, only 76% of it was available at any given time during the year as an average. In 2017, it was 78. 2018 was 71. 2019 was 66%. 2020, 65%. And now 2021, dropping even further. So that means of that 58,000 megawatts, at the moment, right now today, we probably only have about 30, maybe 35,000 megawatts of that um, Generational, generational capacity. And so you understand now why we have electricity problems and why we have a problem with load shedding. It's because there's not enough electricity. And so some of the biggest power stations in South Africa are Kusili, this is number one, and they produce 4,800 megawatts. Mudupi, which produces 4,788. Kendall Power Station, which produces 4,116. Majuba, Matimbi, Letobo, Tukuta, Tuka. Tutuka, excuse me, Matla, Duva, Creole, Arnot, Hendrina, and they all produce about 3,000, 3,000, 3,600, 3,600, 3,600, 3,000, and it goes down the list. Um, I'll put this list up on the screen as well here, but you can see the majority of these power stations are coal-fired power stations. Uh, South Africa is actually known for being one of the worst greenhouse emissions, um, not greenhouse emissions, but rather coal-fired power station emitters per capita, meaning we burn more coal per person than a lot of other countries. Even with countries that use more electricity than us, we produce our energy very dirtily and not in a clean manner. And our power stations are old, antiquated, and filthy for the environment. And these old, filthy power stations are not maintained properly as years of mismanagement and corruption and that that we can talk about. Um, and so that's why they keep on having these breakdowns, because they were built... 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, and they haven't been maintained, and we haven't built a lot of new power stations since then, and that's why we have breakdowns and breakdowns, and we have a lack of energy, and we have load shedding. And if you ask why, why does South Africa mainly use coal-fired power stations? Well, it's because in the past, they were the cheapest electricity to manufacture, they were big infrastructure projects that provided jobs for low-income communities and that because most of our power stations are up in Mpumalanga and towards the northeastern portion of the country because that's where our mines, I think, are predominantly based. And so it was jobs, it was uh, a voter base for the ANC government. And generally, it, coal was just the de facto standard for electricity production in the past 50 years. Now that is shifting majorly with solar and nuclear and hydropower and all of those good things. Um, but South Africa, <laughs> as anyone who lives in South Africa will know, is very backwards and is about 20, 30, 40 years behind a lot of the first world nations of the world. And so, you know, we're still building big coal powered stations in 2020 and 2021 because uh, the tenders were made a long time ago, because we promised jobs to certain areas, because we promised certain communities we were going to electrify them fastly, fast and cheaply. And so you see the kind of problem there. So if you look at this chart over here, you'll see that 85.7% of South Africa's uh, energy comes from coal-fired power stations. The next 5.2% comes from nuclear, then natural gas, then diesel, then solar, then wind, and then other. So you'll see renewable energies are still a tiny portion of our electricity production, which sucks because that's the future and it's the only way we're going to reduce our carbon emissions. Um, but you see there, 85% of our electricity production comes from coal, which is terrible. And nuclear energy, we only have one nuclear power station at Kuburg. And at the moment, why, another reason why we're busy having load shedding is because one of the units at Kuburg is offline. A couple of months ago, I remember reading there was a fault or something, and so they took it offline just to have a, a quick check at it, and it was working fine. They fixed the fault. But because they had already switched it off, and because, as I explained to you earlier, electricity infrastructure takes a while to shut down and start up, they decided, let's bring forward some of the maintenance we had planned for a few months' time. And so they switched off one of the units at Kuburg. They're busy uh, doing some scheduled maintenance. And so one of the units at Kuburg is offline. And so if you think about it, if 5.2% of the entire South African energy infrastructure comes from one nuclear power station, Kuburg, and half of that station is offline as it is for maintenance, that's 2.5% of the electricity infrastructure just gone like that. And like, I don't want to get into a long rant about nuclear energy because I love nuclear energy and I can tell you many, many reasons why it's so good because it doesn't produce any carbon emissions because the, the, the fears of nuclear are way overblown. Chernobyl, 
um, Fukushima, only a couple hundred people died in those incidents, not the thousands and millions that uh, scary movies and documentaries make it seem like. Coal-fired power stations kill hundreds of thousands of people every year due to air pollution. In South Africa, up in Mpopo and up in Mpumalanga, hundreds of people die every year because of uh, air pollution due to the coal-fired power stations up there. Coal energy is filthy and terrible compared to nuclear energy. And nuclear energy provides so much baseload power to the electricity grid that solar and uh, uh, sorry, wind energy cannot produce because you can't store that electricity. And when the sun goes off or, or the wind dies down, those electricity um, sources are they're just not there anymore. They're not working. That's why nuclear energy and coal-powered energy is still so popular today because it provides baseload power. In the middle of the night, you can still burn coal. Plutonium still gives off energy, and you can have electricity production. Uh, and nuclear is just a far better way of doing that. And if a lot of the world moved to nuclear, as it really should, we could have an extra 100, 200, 300 years to solve our climate emission problems and to move towards more, ultimately, renewable energy sources like wind and solar and that. But I don't want to get too into depth on that, but basically South Africa needs to produce more renewable energy. I saw an article earlier today about how wind farms off the coast of the South African uh, beaches and that could produce like three, four times as, I think it was maybe 11 times as much electricity as the country actually needs. But of course, it involves government um, waking up and realizing that there's an actual problem, spending the money, building the infrastructure, not giving the tenders and contracts to people who don't know what they're doing or are just going to loot uh, and be corrupt and steal money from the projects. And, you know, I don't want to get into politics here, but it's, it's ridiculous that we find ourselves in this kind of problem when we claim to be such a first world nation. Obviously, we're a third world nation, but you know, we claim to be, you know, the most developed country in Africa and that yet places like Nigeria and that are far outstripping our GDP growth. And especially after COVID, I don't see our recovery going anywhere anytime fast. Sorry, losing my train of thought here. But basically, we've got a big problem with electricity infrastructure and no, <laughs> no seemingly fast coming solutions to it. And so what are the consequences of load shedding? In conclusion here, wrapping up, I just want to say, you know, we've been talking a lot about why load shedding is so irritable and so bad. And, you know, we all know that it's frustrating to have the lights off and to, you know, maybe if you're lucky, have a UPS that can power one or two lights or your Wi-Fi in your house and that. And maybe you have to wait till the load shedding ends till you cook dinner. But why it's a problem is because without a huge amount of electricity infrastructure in the country, no big business or infrastructure can be built. You can't open factories, you can't produce goods, you can't produce metals, cars, any of the things that a country needs to develop itself and provide jobs and increase GDP growth and make the citizens of the country ultimately wealthier can't happen without electricity. Electricity is the driving factor in how countries develop and how countries build things and how countries build infrastructure. And without electricity, you can't do that and your country is going nowhere. Our politicians often talk a lot about the fourth industrial revolution and how Africa is going to leapfrog the rest of the world by um, getting on board with fourth industrial revolution technologies and that. That's bullshit. Fourth industrial revolution is about uh, machine learning and is about the internet and cloud computing and how that's going to revolutionize the world. Hello, computers run on electricity, people. You can't be part of the fourth industrial revolution if you haven't even finished the second industrial revolution of electrifying your country. And I hope that if anyone watching this, if anyone important is watching this, you remember that the next time you want to make some stupid statement about the fourth industrial revolution. Computer engineering, we work with technologies and that that are part of the fourth industrial revolution. It ain't happening in South Africa until you get some good electricity infrastructure. And so thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Uh, I'm always fascinated by infrastructure and fascinated by learning the logistics of how a country, any country in the world, provides its citizens with electricity and the infrastructure that you know we all take for granted every day, like the internet and that. So I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your load shedding.